Hello everyone! Today, I will be explaining 20.3 diseases caused by bacteria and viruses. I will explain how bacteria cause disease, how viruses cause disease, and finally, define emerging disease and explain why emerging diseases are a threat to human health. The way that bacteria cause disease is by pathogens. They are disease-causing agents that can come from any taxonomic group. However, bacteria and viruses are among the most common. Bacteria are able to cause disease through two of these general ways. One, some bacteria destroy living cells and tissues of the infected organism directly. For example, we have the bacterium that causes tuberculosis. This pathogen is inhaled into the lungs, where its growth triggers an immune response that can destroy large areas of the tissue. The bacterium also may travel through blood vessels to other sites in the body, causing similar damage. Number two, other bacteria release toxins, which are poisons that interfere with the normal activity of the host. They include the species that caused botulism, which causes a deadly, disease, a deadly form of food poisoning. We have several examples of human bacterial diseases. First, we have the Lyme disease. It affects on the body includes a rash on the site of the tick bite, fever, fatigue, and headaches. It gets transmitted through the bacterium Perella. We also have tuberculosis, which includes fatigue, weight loss, fever, night sweats, chills, and furthermore. It transmits through bacterial particles that are inhaled. We also have the strip throat, which includes fever, sore throat, headache, fatigue, and nausea. It happens through direct contact with the mucus from an infected person or direct contact from the infected wounds or breaks in the skin. Most of the bacteria are harmless, but still, the probability of catching a bacterial infection is high enough for a person to warrant efforts to control the bacterial growth. Firstly, by physical removal, washing hands or other surfaces with soap under running water doesn't kill pathogens, but it does help dislodge both bacteria and viruses. Secondly, the usage of disinfection chemical solutions that kill bacteria can be used to clean bathrooms, kitchens, hospital rooms, and other places where bacteria may flourish. Thirdly, food storage should be kept in low temperatures, like those inside a refrigerator. It will slow down the growth of bacteria and keep most foods fresher for a longer period of time than possible at a room temperature. Fourthly, food processing like boiling, frying, or steaming can sterilize many kinds of food by raising the temperature of the food to a point where bacteria are killed. Finally, sterilization by heat of objects such as medical instruments, temperature well above 100 degrees Celsius can prevent the growth of potentially dangerous bacteria. Most bacteria cannot survive such temperatures. To prevent bacterial diseases, the use of vaccines is very important. A vaccine is a preparation of weakened or killed pathogens or inactivated toxins. When injected into the body, a vaccine promotes the body to produce immunity to that specific disease. Immunity is the body's ability to destroy pathogens or inactivated toxins. And to treat bacteria, a number of drugs can be used to attack a bacterial infection. These drugs include antibiotics, such as penicillin, for example, that block the growth and the reproduction of bacteria. Antibiotics disrupt proteins or cell processes that are specific to that bacterial cell. In that way, they do not harm the, the host cell. Like bacteria, viruses produce diseases by disrupting the body's normal homocytus. One, Viruses attack and destroy certain cells in the body, causing symptoms of the associated disease. The polio virus, for example, destroys cells in the nervous system, producing paralysis. Two, viruses cause infected cells to change their patterns of growth and development, sometimes leading to cancer. Here we have some examples of the human viral diseases. Firstly, we have the common cold. It affects on the body include sneezing, sore throat, fever, headaches, and muscle aches. It gets transmitted through contacts with contaminated objects or droplet inhalation. We also have AIDS, the HIV. It destroys the helper T cells, which are needed for normal immune system function. It gets transmitted through sexual contact, contact with contaminated blood or bloody fluids, and it can be passed to babies during delivery or during bre breastfeeding. We also have the hepatitis B, uh, which includes uh, jaundice, fatigue, abdom abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and joint pain. It gets transmitted through contact with contaminated blood or bloody fluids. The best way to, to protect against most viral diseases lie in prevention, often by the use of vaccines. Personal hygiene matters too. 
Effective ways to help prevent infection include washing your hands frequently, avoiding contact with sick individuals, and coughing or sneezing into a tissue or your sleeve, not onto your hands. Unlike bacterial diseases, viral diseases cannot be treated with antibiotics. In recent years, however, limited progress has been made in developing a handful of antiviral drugs that attack viral enzymes that the host cells do not have. These treatments include an antiviral medication that can help speed recovery from the flu virus and others that have helped pr prolong the lives of people infected with HIV. Due to the short time between successive generations of these pathogens, it allows them to evolve rapidly, especially in response to human efforts to control them. This causes new diseases to emerge that are called emerging diseases. It is any unknown disease that appears in a population for the first time or a well-known disease that suddenly becomes harder to control. The possibility of, of the rapid spread of the new disease is a risk of every trip a person takes and every shipment of food or goods. The, pa the pathogens that cause the emerging diseases are particularly threatening to the human health because human populations have little to no resistance to them and because methods of control have yet to be developed. The widespread use of antibiotics has led to a process of natural selection that favors the emergence of resistance to these powerful drugs. Physicians now must fight superbugs that are resistant to the whole groups of antibiotics and that transfer drug resistance genes from one bacterium to another through conjugation. An especially dangerous form of multiple drug resistance has been recently appeared in a common bacterium known as MRSA. It can cause infections that are especially difficult to control. MRSA skin infections can be spread by close contact, including the sharing of personal items such as towel and athletic gear, and can often spread in hospitals, where MRSA bacteria can infect surgical wounds and spread from one patient to the other. Because bacteria replicate so quickly, their genetic makeup can change rapidly, sometimes allowing a virus to jump from one host species to another, causing new viruses. Gene shuffling is also a reason for new viruses to emerge. An infectious disease in sheep called scrap eye led to the discovery of particles called prions, which is short for protein infectious particles. Although prions were first discovered in sheep, many animals, including humans, can become infected with prions. They are formed when a protein known as PRP gets improperly enfolded. Prions themselves can cause PRP proteins to misfold, producing even more prions. An accumulation of prions can damage nerve cells, as shown in the figure here. So first, firstly, the PRP proteins are produced, the proteins are misfolded, prions cause additional PRP proteins to misfold, thereby producing even more prions, and finally, prions accumulate and cause cell damage. Thank you guys for listening. This is the end of our lesson.